Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today you join me as I'm heading back down to Devon today because one of our subscribers, Matt, has got in touch. He said, would you be interested in a 2018 Jaguar XFS, which is like the three litre supercharged beast. And you imagine my ears pricked up and I was like, yeah, I might be interested in that. I think he said it's the 385 brake horsepower version sounds pretty good to me and he's like I'd rather say that to you and see it on the channel and I was like fair enough I upped my offer a little bit and I said why don't I come down and we'll actually film picking it up so that is what we are going to do today we will see you when we get down to Devon and we meet Matt and we'll have a little chat and find out why he's getting rid of this awesome car to go electric <laughs> Matt, how are we doing? Hello. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, this is Toby in our Hello. camera. How are you doing? <laughs> I was looking for the private number plate, so I forgot we must have discussed you were taking the number plate I, yeah, off. Yeah, I but... took it off, um, and now it's the V5 and everything has come through. I had it since February. I started my Jag history with an XF 2.7, like okay, three, yeah, three yeah. or four years ago. And I've had company cars up until then, and I've never really considered a Jag. I don't know why. I've always had BMWs and standard stuff, but I loved it. Yeah, I think it handled way better than my 535 that I had. Moved across to here, thought, right, probably need to upgrade for the long journey, so I bought an XJ. Right. So the 2014, I think it was, three litre diesel. Then I realised that actually, whilst I was still going back and seeing my family, it was the EGR, the DPF, because I was just doing a short journey, it's down to the school. Right, now. yeah, yeah. So it made me slightly, um, slightly concerned. You always have the fear, don't you? Although mm. premium petrol seemed to sort out my 2.7. Once I started putting that in, you didn't really get any more issues. So I thought petrol is the way forward. There supercharged, obviously. Three litre supercharged V6. Goes very, very quickly. Do you say it's the uh, one that's 385 or so it's 380, it? I think it's 380 or 385, because they do a, a, a lower um, spec version, a 340. Yeah. Um, and this is the, so that's the upgrade to this. And also you got the digital dash and the, and the big display inside. So they only did this engine for about three years, I think. So they're quite rare. So I got this actually from a dealer in Carlisle. Yeah. Still got a warranty on it until February. Oh, really? So you can transfer that across. Superb. Um, That's always want. good. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to. Um, You've managed to do that yeah. well. You get it exactly on 50. I know, 000. that was a happy accident. <laughs> <laughs> Has a kicky open. Oh, it does. Thing. Okay. I took the fuse out of that bad boy. Oh, really? It sits in there and the fuse is in the glove box. But every time I walk past it, it's a bit hypersensitive. Yeah. So I was walking around getting the kids in and out, and it bloody thing keeps opening and opening. So <laughs> you've got to keep getting back out to close so it again or whatever. So if you want that to work again, you need yep. to <laughs> pop the fuse back in. You're getting rid of it now because you've got your charging point, you get an electric car. <laughs> Even more so now, I'm thinking, I'm just, I'm just doing the little runs. Everything seems to make sense to get an electric car now. To be honest, me. coming out here, to, you said to us that you're, you're not a million miles away from Chops. Oh yeah, James I Chops. it's about 20 minutes away, I think, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And you're more deep as dark as Devon than I thought he was, to be honest. <laughs> He's basically, you get off the A road, there he is. There he is, right, but yeah. yeah no, got, to get couple... to you, we've come through some, some more lanes we, and whatever we call, else. We call B roads, A roads around here. So it's um, got a full Jag history. Yep. Um, I had an interim oil change done about three months ago. And also, the common thing on these, these engines is water leaking yep. from the plastic components. So as soon as I bought that, I knew that. I booked it in with um, a JAG specialist in Doncaster um, and to get all the plastic components replaced. Um, and about two weeks before I went up there, the water pump enclosure popped. They did that under warranty and I went up there. So everything else has been done. So there's a pipe underneath. There's a pipe that goes through the V which is a pain in the ass. You have to take the supercharger off, apparently. Yeah. But that means that they, they serve as the supercharger as well while they were doing that. So that's kind Excellent. of handy. So the common water issues shouldn't be an yeah, issue Yeah, it should anymore. be sort of ticked off by now. Yeah. Right, are you okay to take it out for a quick yeah, spin? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Get my no car problem. up this awful parking position. I've <laughs> turned up here embarrassing myself. Look at the state of that. <laughs> so not only does this have five months worth of Jaguar warranty, it's got half a tank of fuel, which is always nice to see, and it's got a ceramic coating on it already. So it's quite a few little jobs ticked off for me but by a complete chance it's also got the dash camera that i've been wanting to try as well which is the viofo a229 pro which from all my research seems to be one of the better ones to have and i was already in talks with them trying to see if they'd send me one to review so 
quite excited to check this out and see what the footage is like. That's what I was saying, the mileage is exactly 58,000. <laughs> and usually when people do like a car's bought for more inquiry, they just say it's like 58,000, but it means it's slightly over or slightly under, or just, they say it's just coming up to exactly on. It's very rare this happens. It was nice and smooth, isn't it? It looks like he hasn't driven it for a little while. There is a bit of like surface corrosion on the disc. It's nice with a virtual cockpit thing in here. I think we've got all kinds of different modes. I don't know what that does with the exhaust or whatever. In a good sense, it's nice and quiet and like subdued. Being a V6, especially a supercharged, it's gonna be probably quite revvy, isn't it? Then again, supercharger seems to give you instant power. That's what it tends to do, isn't it? Dynamic is the most raciest. Your gauges all change to red and whatever. And then we were in normal. And there's an eco mode. Brakes feel good, steering feels good. Engine feels very solid. We have a lot of fun driving this back. All seems good to me. This is my sort of car, this is. Let's go back, see Matt, and give him the best part of 20 grand then. Lovely. I was just saying you need to put the windows down. It's the supercharged whistle that... Um, yeah, yeah, I don't want to... We only just warmed up. I didn't want to go too hard. There's an eco mode, which softens up the suspension a bit. Okay. Just because I'm old now, I put that in quite a lot. <laughs> just double checking everything's all swapped over to the new number plate, which it has, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah say, I did that uh, about... Well, I think I did it last week or the week before. Yeah, it's been um, machine... Multi-stage machine polished and ceramic coated. Yep. So, um, although you get the Devon rash around there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it needs a little bit of attention on that side. But yeah, you want to tell your um, your your valet guys. It just beads off now. It's yeah. so easy to clean it. Yeah. But, but before it was it was terrible. I mean, it must have been a company car or something. I don't know. But I mean, it had been in car washes. It was just swirl marks. Yeah, it was terrible. It. But it's good. Yeah, like you say, you can see there's a few on the other side from where you end up in the bush, like we say, when the yeah, the agricultural you just get pushed lorry over, comes, pushed comes over along. Pushed over by a yeah. tractor, yeah. And then, it's yeah. that or, or die. I better get some bank details from you. I'll yep. send you some money. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Much appreciated. Enjoy it. We will. Do you know what I was going to ask you actually is um, what do you think of your dash cam that's in there? And I love the wedge shape because it just makes it it's really so tucked out of the way, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you see people with them right, right in the middle of the windscreen. It's kind of hidden away. All right. Well, thank it's you very fun. much. We will. Um... I'll miss it. Bye. <laughs> Off we go. And I think. Seeing as we've driven past James, like literally, I could point out the turning that was 100 yards away from where his unit is, that will swing in on the way back. And that is a national speed limit there, so shall we put it in dynamic mode? All the sports for the gearbox as well. Pretty quick. You almost get more supercharger wine than you do any exhaust notes to be honest. As nerdy as it sounds, I've been researching dash cameras for a while now. A, because we get sent loads of review offers from them all the time, but B, I want a really good quality one to put in our workhorse Discovery 4. All of the review videos I watch kept bringing up the Viofo A229 Pro as one of the top options. And I think that's because it's got a really good quality 4K front camera, a 2K rear camera, and it also comes with a 1080p interior cabin camera as well although matt doesn't seem to have fitted that one in this jaguar so you've got every angle covered and essentially you've got a ready to go car vlogging setup the 4k resolution video seems so much better than a lot of the footage i've seen i think that's down to their starvis 2 sensor that they use in this dash camera and then of course you've got the 2k camera in the back as well which is great if something happens behind you maybe someone tailgating you or something like that You've got all the footage you could want in really good detail, taking down all the number plate details and things like that. Seeing as we're pulling up to Chop's garage now, I'll take the footage as we pull up to his garage and the sign and everything, so you can see just how good quality this video is. That's um, for me then, is it? I did think this is a bit of James. Absolutely outrageous. I'm absolutely outraged, I am. Payback when you went and got that one at, at Bristol and came back down, you said the guide said, oh, I thought about offering it to shift him out, but I don't think he'd want it. Been very well cared for. It hasn't even got stone chips at the front. Mine with the diesel was just ridiculously quick. Mm. 600 newton meters, it was one of the best cars I've ever owned. This one must go really well as well, I thought. Right, well, enjoy. Oh, well. It's a pleasure seeing one of you.
Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. I'm going to speak to Viofo and see if they'll sponsor this video, seeing as it's just a great bit of chance that we found this in this car. So I better tell you about some of the features that kind of got me excited and why I wanted one of them in my car. So not only does it have a Wi-Fi, GPS, and a great app to help you download all of your footage and change all of your settings. It's also got a parking mode. So if it detects an impact or motion, it will start recording. So you're never going to come back to your car and find a massive scratch and not know where it's come from. But best of all, despite all the features that's packed into this camera, it's actually really sleek and unobtrusive. Fits perfectly in the windscreen there and it doesn't stick out, which I think is one of the biggest design flaws of most dash cameras. So finding that dash camera in this car was most definitely a result. And I'm gonna to speak to Viofo and try and get you a link for one of these. So make sure you check that out in the description and get one for yourselves. I like it a lot. So we're about halfway back now. I've put around about 31 miles on this. I say around about, I know exactly I've put 31 miles on this because it was on exactly 58,000. You hear the supercharger whine more at lower revs, like on a real, on a real dig. I wonder what the sound like with. A nice sports exhaust on it, but probably most people who are going to be buying a Jaguar XF S still want some refinement they want performance they want excitement but they probably don't want to be chatting about it could be wrong i'm getting to know the car a little bit now i absolutely love this interior really comfortable heated seats work really well steering wheel is really nice and ergonomic the finish of everything in here just feels nice it's just a very nice place to be the sound system is really good i absolutely love the infotainment system and the virtual cockpit, all our gauges are on this big LCD screen. Did find the navigation a bit tricky to try and plot in an address. Now I know Matt did tell me this car is app connectable, so you can get a, a Jaguar app. So we need to speak to Jaguar and get them to clear him off as a user. Couldn't figure out how to actually plot in an address is what I'm trying to say here. And then I realized that I can use the speech function so i just asked it please navigate to the postcode of barra motors it came up with pick an option i clicked it and it was away it was navigating it blows my mind and that's one of the things that i missed in my tesla review the other day as i was saying it's a bit tricky to learn how to do all the different things and i forgot that the speech system on that is incredible you just ask it to do anything you can ask it to open the glove box and it will do it you can ask it to turn on the heated seats and it does it it blows my mind because I remember when you would have speech things on cars in the first place. You, there's probably some Clarkson sketch somewhere where you'd be like, you know, navigate to so-and-so and, -so and it's, it would come up with something stupid like Bishopsgate, blah, blah, blah. One thing that's slightly disappointing but probably unsurprising is there's quite a bit of road noise in here. But I think that's probably down to the big alloy wheels and the low profile tyres. Probably to be expected, especially on a sporty car like this. But overall, I am absolutely smitten with it. I can't wait to see this on the forecourt of Barra Motors, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think supercharger noises ever failed to put a smile on your face. I feel like we have probably like 20 way adjustment on these seats. Heated as well, which I've got on currently, which is very nice so far electrically adjusted steering column it's got full jaguar service history there was an advisory for this car on having a crack in the rim when he bought it and he got it from a jaguar garage and they actually had a spare wheel on their display stand it was the only wheel they could find that would match and they actually swapped it for that so that he has got a completely new wheel on there now. No worries with that advisory. He also said that he's got his warranty on there, which lasts until February, which, uh, where are we now? That gives us five months of dealer warranty, which is transferable. And in fact, he's already filled out his portion of the dealer warranty. So that is an amazing selling feature. He may well have told me that when he was messaging me on Instagram, but I am notoriously forgetful. That is a real bonus. So I'm really chuffed about that. The car's in really nice condition, besides a few light scratches down the passenger side. Hopefully that is mainly in the ceramic coating, which he said is on here. And the guys can do something with that, you know, just polish that back and correct it. But again, it's very minor. It's just where driving down these country lanes, you end up having to squeeze past people and scratching along the bushes. It can't really be avoided. He also said that eco mode not only makes it more economic, but it makes it more comfortable, apparently, and does something with the suspension. To be fair, I think an XF lends itself more to being 
a comfortable cruiser than it does a sporty performance car. But there's nothing to say, it can't do both. One of those cars that's going to keep surprising me with features and functions, I think. There's probably a million and one things that I don't know about this car. There's certainly a lot more that I don't know about it than I do. Just spotted that we've got heated steering wheel as well, which I don't really want today, but in winter would be very luxurious indeed. We've got memory seats with three different memories. We're actually up to 45 miles per gallon now. Now that I'm not mucking around and getting my foot down everywhere to hear the supercharger noises, I don't know exactly what the figures are in this car, but that surprises me for a 3-litre V6 supercharged 380-odd horsepower car. Thank you so much to Viofo for sponsoring this video with their amazing A229 Pro dash camera. If you want to grab yourself one of those, I highly recommend it. You can use the link in the description and save yourself a few quid. Anyway, that will be about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do get a thumbs up. It will really help us out. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Again, it would be a massive favor to us. And in return, I am giving away a £4,000 Tudor watch as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers. A massive thank you to Matt for reaching out with his Jaguar to sell us. If you want to sell your car, especially if you think you might want to see it end up on the channel, then drop us an inquiry. Head to our website, carsbottformore.co.uk, and fill out the form, and we will come back to you as soon as we possibly can. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.